see maybe in the future where when you go to start a business, you have to disclose all this, but it's not simple, is it? The, like if you go to the government website right now and you try to fill this out, you're going to look like me, uh, you know, at the end of filling out these reports that take for hours. Hey everyone, this is Kelsey Clark, aka the Beard Guy. I'm here. Welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e commerce and Amazon podcast. Today we are discussing how to avoid the $1,000 mistake in navigating DOI reporting. So, what is the Corporate Transparency Act and Beneficial Ownership Information Report? How do you file a BOI report and who is considered a beneficial owner? So welcome to another Lunch with Norm, e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. All right, so today we are discussing uh, how to avoid this $10,000 mistake navigating the BOI reporting. Our guest is the CEO and co-founder of Fileforms. Uh, prior, prior to Fileforms, he was an investor, acquirer, and value creation resource in several financial services, uh, insurance, and healthcare businesses throughout his private, private equity, corporate development, and investment banking career. He led a pre-tax healthcare benefits third-party administrator through eight successful acquisitions and a sale to multi-billion dollar private equity firm. Please welcome Frank Tuminello. So before we get to Frank, uh, we're gonna have a quick word from our sponsor. And uh, just give me a second. I'm stepping in for Norm here. So this is for Stellar Basics. All right, so, uh, okay. Hey, Amazon sellers, ever faced with account suspensions, ASIN hiccups, or IP headaches? Introducing Seller Basics, your Amazon accounts guardian. With just $99 a month, Seller Basics offers a dedicated team to shield your businesses from these challenges. Plus, these membership offers free legal consultations from seasoned e-commerce attorneys, no long-term contracts, cancel with just a month's notice. View your Seller Basics as your Amazon accounts health plan. Check it out at sellerbasics.com. And as a disclaimer, uh, note that Seller Basics is not an insurer or a law firm. Consultations come from independent firms results can vary membership is needed before events leading to claims and terms apply and it looks like norm is back and sit back relax grab a cup of coffee and enjoy the show welcome frank good to be here norm what a crazy way to start a podcast what a crazy way to have your first appearance uh we can handle it we can handle it <laughs> well you're you're from the north right you're a hockey guy so uh yeah we can handle that that's right that's <laughs> uh, right you know, I uh, I was talking to uh, an associate of yours. Uh, uh, this goes back months ago. And uh, he was talking to me. And actually, we had a, a lawyer on that mentioned this at one point, too. So I think that's where the first time I heard this. But he started talking about this Transparency Act. And I knew from the podcast a little bit. But then Mikey, uh, he says, oh, you, you, you've got to talk to Frank because... It's a lot worse than what you think. I said, like, how worse? <laughs> right. And he was talking about the fines. And so I jumped on the phone with you. I got some information. I said, you got to come on the podcast. So I, I guess the very first thing we got to talk about is what is the Corporate Transparency Act, or you know, some people call it CTA, and the Beneficial Ownership Information, or BOI report. Certainly. Um, great to be speaking with all of you on, on this very timely topic. Um, you know, as, as some of you may have heard or may not have heard uh, yet, uh, this, is, this is super important. Uh, this is something uh, that, that will need to be addressed by the end of the year. As Norm mentioned, the, the fines are quite substantial. Um, but in 2001, uh, kind of in the midst of the COVID pandemic, there was a law passed in the United States uh, called the Corporate Transparency Act that uh, was was effectuated to elevate the reporting standards in the United States around uh, these anonymous shell companies. Uh, throughout the United States for many, many years, you've been able to 
to form entities such as LLCs. Uh, many folks, freelancers, e-commerce folks form, form these types of entities to really start their business and kind of kick off their entrepreneurial journey. And um, unfortunately, those, those uh, similar entities, shell companies, LLCs, are also used by criminals uh, in our country to hide assets, shield assets from things such as taxes or, or even use them for money laundering. So um, given the U.S. has allowed, uh, you know, these entities to be, uh, you know, formed and, and kind of used anonymously, uh, it's led to a lot of folks, uh, you know, gravitating towards the U.S., uh, with with the wrong intentions, and uh, they're using these companies to to kind of hide assets, as mentioned, and you know, effectively uh, around the world for many many years. Uh, m other major economies uh, do have reporting standards where you're not able to form an entity without uh, disclosing the beneficial owners. So uh, now, since January 1st of 2024, when uh, the corporate transparency actually corporate transparency act actually went into effect, uh, business owners in the United States. Uh, have to disclose who owns uh, the entity uh, that they're conducting business. So any LLC or corporation or partnership in the United States, uh, with a few very specific exceptions, uh, will have to disclose what's called the Beneficial Ownership Information Report, uh, which is a, a, a compliance form that is uh, disclosed to the federal government that contains uh, you know, the, the identifying information and, and some pretty private information on, on the beneficial owners of, uh, of the businesses. So this is a new reporting requirement. Um, a lot of folks think of it in the context of tax, but it's actually not disclosed to the IRS. It's disclosed to a, a separate department of the U.S. Treasury called the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, which is somewhat of a, a scary title. Um, and not a lot of business owners have ever had a need to know that Kind of section of our government before, but effectively they will be the ones in charge of uh, policing this new law. And uh, there, there are some pretty significant penalties that will be implemented at the end of the year if the report is not filed on time or if it isn't filed correctly. Um, so there's plenty more to unpack there, but at a high level, um, it's a new information disclosure with the federal government to help prevent money laundering. So I'm curious, at one point, I don't anymore, but at one point, when I had a business in Hawaii, I had a holding company that, uh, oh, so I owned 100% of the holding company. The holding company opened up a C Corp. The C Corp uh, had an LLP. That's the only way I could own an LLP in, in the US. Um, and well, you could do it other ways, but for tax benefits, long story. Uh, those are four different entities. When you're going and you're doing this, like, would it go right like that, that LLP, would it have to link back to me 100% or does it go through, oh, this company, this LLC or LLP is owned by this C Corp, this C Corp is owned by, or does it go right back to the main person? So that's a great question, Norm. This is very different than typical corporate structures where entities can own entities. The government is trying to understand exactly who owns, and when I say who, I mean individuals own each entity. So uh, what we like to say at Bioforms is each reporting company needs to find their beneficial owner's pulse, meaning entities don't have pulses, individuals have pulses. So right. each, each entity, no matter how many levels of entity ownerships there are, those beneficial owners need to be tied directly with each entity. So in your case, you would be tied with all four if you were 100% owner or say you 50% owner, you would be disclosed as the beneficial owner each time on each entity instead of the entities owning each other and you just kind of owning one entity. Uh, I really want to make this clear too because uh, uh, when I heard about this uh, for new companies that are registering, they have a whole different time frame. So Certainly. if you're in, if, if you're uh, a company that's been around over a year, you have until the end of the year, correct? It's it's a little uh, more nuanced than that, actually. Um, the the law states that if you were a business prior to January first, twenty twenty four, so effectively all businesses that, that existed prior to this year, those businesses have until the end of this year to file or have until January 1st, 2025 to file. Uh, that being said, all businesses formed 
after or on January 1st, 2024, so all businesses formed in the current year, have 90 days to disclose this BOI report to the federal government. Now, that 90-day window is pretty tight as is. In 2025, if you're forming an entity, that 90-day window actually shrinks down to 30 days. So this Are is you quickly, serious? Correct. So this quickly is becoming part of forming a business in the United States. Wow. And you, you can't plead ignorance, right? Uh, I have no idea that this, uh, this, uh, I had no idea that I had to report. Uh, that's not going to cut it, right? Perhaps in this initial phase, um, we haven't heard of any penalties being uh, levied just yet. However, uh, we did, we did meet with FinCEN last week and they, they stated that uh, folks need to willfully disclose their information. Uh, how do you define that willful disclosure? Sure, you might be able to claim in, in, ignorance to a, a, an extent. However, uh, before too long, I suspect the government will start levying fines and it would be really unfortunate to, uh, to find out about this by receiving a fine from the government. So, you know, our business was, was built to help create awareness and then ultimately provide a, an efficient solution uh, so that so, people can get this out of the way. I'm I'm really happy. Like I can see the listeners that are on here right now, uh, and you know some people might not think that this is that important, and it's so bloody important. Uh, I can see maybe in the future where when you go to start a business, you have to disclose all this, but it's not simple, is it? The like if you go to the government website right now and you try to fill this out, you're gonna look like me. Uh, you know, at the end of filling out these reports that take for hours. Yeah, the government expects uh, the filings to take two to three hours per entity. Um, obviously, time is a scarce commodity and uh, business owners, uh, you know, every minute counts. So uh, to, to fiddle around on a government portal, uh, you know, for, for hours on end and, and you know, potentially get to a point where you don't have peace of mind, but you did kind of get through it, uh, you know, still isn't an amazing experience. And then I think it's also important to note that this is a, this is a perpetual reporting requirement. So um, despite us discussing those initial deadlines, going forward after your initial disclosure, you have to maintain the information where if any of the information changes on the form, you have to redisclose uh, any <sighs> change within 30 days. So there's there's a need for a system to continuously offer you reminders of what's been disclosed and what potentially may have changed, or uh, you know, such as an ID expiring, having a system that would track that for you. Uh, because in in some instances you would have to redisclose a form. Uh, if the ID did expire. So the government uh, website, uh, it's there's not a lot of guidance to it. Uh, you kind of have to know what you're doing when you go into it. There's a lot of tripping points. Uh, and then furthermore, you can't actually save your information in it, which that's really, right. <laughs> it puts the onus on the user 100% to have to store sensitive information on behalf of, you know, their fellow beneficial owners. So if you own a business with, you know, husband and wife, maybe that's you know, pretty manageable to maintain that data set. But, you know, if you think about husband, wife, uh, C-suite executives who also have to be disclosed on the form, many beneficial owners, perhaps there's four uh, or so. So before you know it, there's a lot of information to track and uh, no real ability to save it uh, in, in the government site. So that's that's where our solution really comes into play and adds a bunch of value. Right. I, I heard, um, I was talking to another person about this and they had done it, but it, they said it took them four hours. So. Yeah, it's substantial to, you know, spend that amount of time and then subsequently perhaps it doesn't not save. Even do it <laughs> and, and, and then you're still on the hook for, for storing it on your own. And, and these are IDs, you know, not every, uh, you know, business ownership group wants to share their photo IDs and their date of birth and the residential address with their fellow business owners. There's, a lot of uh, potential compromise of that data that can happen in transit. Uh, so it's really important to do that securely and, and ultimately store it securely. Well, I think one of the scariest things to this new rollout is understanding compliance. We touched on it, but if, and let, let's go through some of these, uh, but if you have 
a different uh, address change, personal address change, business address change, and you're out of compliance and those fines can start to build up and you you don't understand that, oh yeah, I moved, you forget about this, you're going to be, every day, you're going to be fined. Correct. It's $591 per day, uh, which is substantial. And that accrues per entity. So if you have, you know, three or four entities that make up your business, that's $591 per day per entity. That That's going to accrue quite quickly. Once the fines get to $10,000 per entity, there are now civil and criminal penalties on the line that are more substantial than the financial penalties. So, um, you know, in, in just a few days, you know, 18 days or so, you're going to be at the kind of tipping point of that $10,000 amount that has accrued. And then subsequently, there's even more liability on the line. So it really goes to show you that if you're not uh, aware and, and kind of receiving a, a reminder when you are moving your business or moving your home, which is obviously a really stressful time to just track everything else that probably matters infinitely more to you, that there is this kind of pending liability that potentially could blindside you. So we, we really want to prevent that with good education and a solution. And, and unfortunately, uh, people aren't talking about it. I'm, I don't see, you know, I, I've, I know uh, Paul Raffleson was on and he was talking about it. Um, your group, but I really, I, and I read a lot of different business magazines. I don't see people talking about this. And it's, uh, again, uh, for Amazon, well, there's millions of Amazon sellers, millions of these small uh, solopreneurs that have started doing this and they have no clue. Yeah, you know, one of the hardest questions I get asked weekly is, how was I supposed to find out about this right. if I didn't speak to you? And unfortunately, I don't have a good answer. Um, we are doing our absolute best as a new business to reach as many of the 40 million businesses that need to file this form as we possibly can. Uh, that being said, uh, it's practically impossible to knock on 40 million doors over the course of the year. Uh, so, so we really try to target as many small businesses directly as we can, but then work with partnerships such as yourselves to really address large groups of business communities uh, through through kind of trusted channels, uh, associations, accountants themselves, lawyers, um, you know, a whole variety of, of different channels to, to help get the word out there. But one of my favorite statistics is actually across all of FinCEN's, who's that regulator who's collecting the form, across all of their social media platforms, inclusive, inclusive of YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, um, you name it, they only have 18,000 total followers. So when you take that 18,000, compare it to the 40 million that need to be aware, there's just a, a huge disconnect as to no how they're going to get their message out. And, uh, you know, we're doing our best to kind of fill that void. We're going to hear about it once enough small businesses hit that $10,000 level. And, uh, I mean, it's not a huge fine, but it's big enough, especially if you're a small uh, entrepreneur, yeah, starting solopreneur. Out. Starting out, every dollar counts. and Every you know, dollar counts. Seriously. So we're at the bottom of the hour. We hit it quick because we were late, but uh, now I'm going to try to stick to the schedule. Uh, Kelsey, I'm going to talk about Start Scale Exit Repeat. All right, everybody. So I am talking about my buddy's book, Colin C. Campbell, Start Scale Exit Repeat. Let's try to get it in focus a little bit. There we go. And you can read it at the bottom there. Uh, Start Scale Exit Repeat uh, was a 10-year journey about my buddy. Uh, he's been uh, an entrepreneur for probably about 30 years. And uh, just what he's done, in his ways that he has a formula for each one of these modules. So for start, he's got four different sections, and then he breaks it down into subsections. Scale, he does the same thing, exit, and then he does the same thing in repeat. And one of the things uh, that he also does in this books, it, book is he interviews over 200 entrepreneurs. So Joe Foster's in here. He's the founder of Reebok. Uh, Vern Harnish is in here. There's a bunch of different entrepreneurs that are in the book. And 
what he does is he just goes through his success formula. So if you want to check it out, you can go to Amazon and it's available on Kindle, softcover, hardcover, or you can head over to Audible and you can choose it there. So, and let us know what you think of it. We've had a bunch of our listeners that have gone and uh, checked it out and uh, everybody seems to love the book. And it also was number one bestseller in about 50, I think it was 15 different categories and this week's number two in small business overall. Uh, so uh, that's just a shout out to Colin Campbell, a buddy of mine. All right, now let's get back to it. Okay. These fines. So if you're, uh, if you're in Israel or if you're in Canada or the UK, uh, Europe, do you still have to apply? It depends if your business is registered or formed in the United States to do business. Um, so if you're if you're simply uh, operating a business outside the U.S. and potentially just um, shipping uh, your services uh, or your product to the U.S., then uh, there's a chance you probably don't have to uh, disclose. However, if you do form your business uh, or register it with the Secretary of State, um, a lot of foreigners potentially use Delaware. Um, because typically that is a, an anonymous uh, requirement and very, very few, uh, relatively speaking, information need to be disclosed to form those entities. Um, those, those businesses certainly would need to uh, disclose the BOI report. It's worth mentioning that uh, economies around the world uh, have, have reported uh, ultimate beneficial ownership information for many, many years, Canada, UK, to name a few. So uh, it's actually uh, wouldn't surprise me if many of the the foreign uh, business owners on this on this podcast potentially uh, might already feel like this is something they they could be aware of, it, but obviously a rude awakening here in the U.S. to have to do this. Yeah, uh, it's it, it's something you just got to do. And and I know um, I have a, a business uh, in Pennsylvania, and uh, my people on the podcast hear me talk about Alpha Lobby all the time. So. You know, we, we it's in our meetings. We have monthly meetings. Okay, we got to get this done. We got to get this done. And uh, I, I can't stress it enough. You've just got to get it done. So if you're an Amazon seller and he come, you just open up a Shopify store, you literally have 30 days. Uh, if you've been, uh, uh, if it was uh, before when? January 1st, 2024. If you formed your business on that date or after, you actually have 90 days to file. Um, if you formed your business before that, we call those legacy entities, January 1st, 2024, and before you have mm -hmm. until the end of this year. Okay. And how many, how, do you know how many have registered right now? As of, as of last week when we met with FinCEN, it was 2.25 million people had filed. Uh, to date out of 40 million, uh, acknowledging that we're already into May. So uh, quite a good portion of the year has already gone by, uh, you know, call it 40, 45% of the year already has gone by. And uh, here we are uh, with only about 5% uh, of the total forms in. So uh, don't, don't check my mental math there, but, you know, from, from a directional standpoint, you can appreciate that there's still a huge lack of folks that still need to file. And uh, potentially a huge uh, avalanche of filings towards uh, kind of Q3, Q4 of this calendar year. So, you know, if there's about 68 million uh, businesses that haven't registered times $10,000, they're going to pay down the debt. That's what they're doing. That, that's what they're doing. They're paying down the debt. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps. I, I don't work in Washington. I'm not sure if I do want to work in Washington. Yeah, yeah. There are decisions that happen there. Uh, and, the, and the rebuttals, but uh, it, is a, it is a substantial amount of money. Actually, another interesting stat is the, the, the U.S. government expects this to be a $21.7 billion cost to small businesses uh, just, just by uh, fulfilling this, this new reporting requirement. So those, those fees will come from you know, talking to attorneys, talking to accountants. Um, there's many attorneys out there that are more than happy to charge substantial billable hour rates uh, to help you file this, um, which, you know, quite frankly, is is a little crazy because they might not even be fully up the learning curve yet on, on what is required. Um, we've, we've been studying the law since its infancy and, and have since provided a very 
uh, strong value solution where you don't have to engage your attorney and, and uh, pay an arm and a leg to, to get this completed. So one of the things I forgot to do during uh, the sponsorship break uh, is to let everybody know that we do have um, a great giveaway today uh, and a little bit of something for everybody. So uh, if this is the first time you're listening to the podcast, uh, we have something called the Wheel of Kelsey. That happens at the top of the hour. If you're interested in joining, it's hashtag Wheel of Kelsey or tag two people and you'll get a second entry. And today uh, we have two things available. So Frank, what do we have? Uh, well, first off, we have a, a promo code. So our, our services will help you get this uh, filing out of the way uh, in, in about a 10 minute process. Uh, very, very intuitive. Uh, you, you can simply save, save those hours of, of putzing around on a government portal, get it done in 10 minutes with confidence, uh, with the, with the file form seal of approval. Um, so feel free to use that promo code there on the screen to, uh, get 20% off our, our rates. Uh, highly recommend this subscription product because it offers that continuous compliance with the notifications and the reminders. Uh, that's $199, effectively $200 will be 20% off uh, for joining this event. Uh, furthermore, we have a very, very uh, useful, especially now that summer's coming around, Yeti cooler. Uh, it's actually a mug. Uh, I, I use them every day. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any golfers on the, on the, on the line, but uh, Great, great to put a cocktail in or a coffee, depending on what you're up to. And uh, uh, that, that also will be, uh, uh, you know, I think offered on, on this event at some point. So uh, excited to give that away. Perfect. Okay. That's, and that's also good for cigars. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> keep it nice and cool. Uh, I, something I'm not sure of when it comes to compliance, if you go and you, you do all this, and you have to go back and change your address. Do you have to go back and do everything all over again, or is it just a change of address? So on the government portal, you will be obligated to start from a clean slate. So you're, you're obligated to store the information, understand what you filed historically, and then you have to start the form over uh, and fill in all the legacy fields and then the single field that that changed so that that's obviously a hassle it's a time suck it's honestly error prone so you could be setting yourself up to fat finger uh you know a date of birth or fat finger an ein and, and ultimately have to then file all over again with a blank slate not a fun experience on our solution however uh we we will remind you that there's a possibility that your address changed and then furthermore uh you can make the single change and then uh, refile with a few simple clicks. So if you think about having an address change and then owning many, many entities, that single click that you make the change on the address, then that will apply to all your entities and you can easily push them and get them refiled. So um, huge time savings by using file forms. Uh, you know, we, we are really defining what, what DOI reporting should be given the nature of the, the broad reaching implications of this new law, 40 million businesses, that's a whole lot of time. Uh, that could potentially be wasted on a government portal. We want to help business owners save time, avoid fines, and get this out of the way so that they can get back to running their business. All right. And any questions out there for any of the listeners, uh, don't be afraid to post it. If you're thinking of it, I know other people are thinking of it as well. So just get it out there. We might miss something that uh, you would be interested in hearing. Uh, does it cost anything extra uh, whether it's, is it, is it free on the government? It is free on the government website. Okay. But it's just that time suck and, you know, fat fingers and just, yeah, it, it's hell. Uh, no, and then, no reminders. You know, I think that's right. the, key. the key piece is that they're, they're not helping you get compliant and they're also not helping you stay compliant where we do both of those things. We guide you through the process so that you can walk away feeling confident that, uh, you did everything correct. And you also have support from our team in case there are questions. You know, we, we are highly responsive. Uh, we do have a, a chat bot that's actually manned by a live person. So uh, that, that's quite helpful this day and age. A lot of AI bots out there. Um, and, uh, you know, our team is highly responsive. We'll get you through it and uh, rest assured that, uh, you know, you'll, you'll avoid those penalties. If there's a change that comes up, uh, does it cost anything more uh, with your app? 
So that's why I recommended the subscription product. Uh, our subscription product comes with unlimited changes of information. It comes with the reminders, it comes with the notifications and allows you to store your information perpetually in a secure environment. Um, so you can get all your business owners into one secure repository, report the necessary BOI reports uh, with the government, and then uh, continuously uh, make changes as needed uh, for no additional charge, uh, which, is, which is a huge, uh, huge value add. Um, so definitely, definitely recommend that uh, for, for, for all, all clients, but specifically for those that are new. If you formed a new business, it's more than likely you will have many milestones in growing your business early on. Perhaps it's a small group when you start, the ownership group expands over time. Perhaps you don't have an office when you start uh, and, and you grow over time and you get an office. So uh, it wouldn't be surprising that if in the first year of your business, you need to file two or three times. Uh, so that's why we highly recommend our subscription product uh, so that you can just alleviate uh, all this tracking and, uh, and kind of put it on us, honestly. Is there a requirement that you have to do this once a year or just as things change? Just as things change. Uh, so given the nature of that 30 day window, uh, depending on how fast you're making changes, uh, you could have to file every 30 days. Other folks might have to file quarterly or some folks might file once and never have to file again. Um, so that is uh, the nature. It, it, honestly, it, it might be easier if it was an annual form, but uh, you know, this is uh, currently how the law is written. Yeah, if you think about it, you know, what, twelve dollars a month, something like that, and it's just an insurance form. That's exactly. the way I'm looking at it. I would much rather put the onus on an app to get back to me uh, when I change my address or just just to nudge me rather than finding out and getting a notice in the mail saying you owe us 10,000 bucks or no civil break. or criminal charges. Exactly. Yeah. So um, again, I don't want to push this on anybody, but we talk about this with web security as well and what you can do, the cheap way of doing it, the free way of doing it, and then the proper way of doing it. Well, you can do it three ways here as well. You can go to your lawyer, you can go and do it yourself, and, or you could go to an app uh, like Frank's. And um, uh, it's up completely up to you, but there's no way around it. You've got to report. Certainly. Okay. Now, I'm wondering, I've never asked you about this, but is, is it insured? If, so, if somebody, if we don't get the information, do you have an insurance policy or anything like that? Uh, we don't, we don't necessarily sell our product as an insurance policy. Um, we do offer assurance, uh, meaning that if there is an issue, our team is going to help you uh, solve the issue. And uh, we also provide what's called a filing analysis uh, upon completing your, your filing with file forms, we provide you a 15 page document of the policies and procedures and ultimately a summary of the information that was disclosed with the government. So God forbid there ever is an issue. You have a third party opinion as to what happened. Um, so once again, it's not a formal insurance policy, but it does offer uh, a sense of defense if there ever is an audit or uh, someone from FinCEN knocking on your door. Uh, we do also have cyber insurance. So obviously the nature of the data that we uh, collect, such as photo IDs, date of birth, you know, uh, residential address, you name it, um, you know, that is the highly sensitive information. So obviously we do have the, the necessary insurance policies in place so that uh, God forbid there was, or was ever an issue, uh, we, we are covered and protected. All right. Um, Kels, any questions? Uh, we can't hear you. I guess I said something that might have offended him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Cool hand. Ah, so small. I received a notification from Amazon about, I believe, this business transparency, and I had to verify all the info. Is this the same thing or completely different? I think I know the answer to this, but I'll let you answer. I, I don't know Amazon uh, closely enough. 100% uh, different. 
hundred percent different. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it is verifying because Amazon's trying to be compliant, right? Uh, they've probably got regulations. I'm not a lawyer, but I can tell you is that the information that is required uh, for uh, for corporate transparency is not just a couple of clicks and you're good. Uh, this is definitely something that you'll have to go to either the government agency lawyer or over to file forms. What is the uh, government agency website, just in case people want to try to navigate yep. this? www.fincen.gov slash BOI. Okay, very good. All right. Uh, anything I missed? You know, one part I just wanted to wouldn't to chime in with is that, um, you know, because, because we aggregate this information, um, we also provide other compliance services. So appreciate the nature that uh, there are foreigners that own businesses in the United States on the line. Uh, you know, some folks might need to disclose a form called an FBAR, Foreign Bank Account Report, Form 114. Uh, this is another form that's actually disclosed with FinCEN. Effectively, if you maintain a bank account, uh, outside the U.S. of $10,000 or more, and you have a business in the U.S. that uh, is operating, you have to uh, disclose this 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 uh, bank account on a form to FinCEN. So um, if you go on our website, you can read more about FBARs and, and it, whether you qualify for one or not. But uh, we do offer that service as well. So if you are an international uh, who, who does file with us, you'll, you'll see at the end of the filing experience the ability to also file your FBAR. And it's a very streamlined experience because we already have a ton of your data already. We're able to parse that data right onto that form and with a few clicks, uh, get, get you that much more into compliance. And over time, we'll continue to build other compliance services. So things such as annual reports, reporting, uh, registered agents, uh, things of that nature, forming entities. Um, we, we have quite a bit of services that we can offer and uh, certainly want to be help, helpful as we can be. Well, it's not the sexiest topic, but saving money and putting money into your pockets is definitely sexy. So check it out, guys. You, you, you really want to make sure that you're on top of this. There's certain things, web security, just your computer security, this, uh, ADA, all of these things can come up and bite you and not for a little bit of money. So you got to make sure that all four of those things are definitely looked into but right now check into this especially if you're new you want to make sure you're compliant okay contact information and then we'll go to our last sponsor certainly uh if you'd like to ask any questions specifically you can reach out to me directly it's frank f-r-a-n-k at fileforms.com uh, furthermore, uh, you can kind of go on to our website and, and give it a shot. It's, it's free to get started, and, um, and we'd welcome any feedback via our chat bot. Uh, our team, as I mentioned, is highly responsive. So we're here to help whether you choose to file with us or not. And, uh, yeah, we want to make compliance as simple as it can be for the millions of businesses out there that are still unaware of this new law. All right, fantastic. Okay, if you haven't, hashtag Wheel of Kelsey. Tag two people. You'll get a second entry. We're going to uh, go to the wheel of Kelsey in about 30 seconds. Kelsey, uh, let's run the sponsor, please. Facing cash flow challenges with your e-commerce business? Discover Viably, your ultimate financial ally. From real-time sales data integrations to immediate funding access, Viably is here to support you. Plan your growth with their free tool for online sellers and engage with specialists whenever you need. Extend your cash flow with Viably. All right, we are back. Now the wheel. It's time for the Wheel of Health. All right, here's the wheel. And we're not going to hear Kelsey. But we hear the wheel. And that's what counts. All right, Drip Fit, you won. Congrats. So since we can't hear Kelsey today, all you need to do, Drip, you've won before, 
just uh, email Kelsey at k at lunchwithnorm.com. Hopefully we get these tech glitches fixed for the next podcast on Wednesday. All right, Frank. Well, thank you, sir, for coming on today. Want more great information? Don't forget to subscribe by clicking here. Also, if you want to check out our latest podcasts, click over here. Lunch with the, lunch with the, lunch with the.